be a moment of um, algorithmic insularity, meaning you pull up your news aggregator, whether it be Google News or something else, right? Mm -hmm. And what is it feeding you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's feeding you what you've expressed interest in, in before, right? Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, that may be the economic reality of Chile, right? right. Uh, but statistically, depending where you are in the world, right, yeah. it is probably less likely to be that reality than it is to be the economic reality of any other country mm -hmm. that, again, you haven't expressed interest in before, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what you're actually in, in as kind of an output of its own expert system, right, mm -hmm. you yourself are being trained as an expert system, right? Mm -hmm within this information bubble of, and we, we talk about bubbles in a, a pejorative sense, but, but they also have to be thought about as a functional dynamic in terms of how information is organized hierarchically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that your preferences are always going to inform, right? your own personal inclination to further discovery on mm -hmm. certain knowledge graphs or certain knowledge trees, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if, you, you know, you yourself have a particular interest in uh, economics and or uh, foreign policy situations in vis-a-vis -vis the, the nation state of Israel, you're going to read more on that and become more expert within that particular field, right? right? But the nature of the algorithmic bubble is going to then exclude out, right, mm -hmm. other potential forms of knowledge tree exploration, right, mm -hmm. um, including perhaps the economic realities of Chile, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it then the question becomes is, as you become more expert, right, mm -hmm. within your own knowledge tree, right, mm -hmm. okay? are you or are you not becoming more interconnected globally, right? Mm -hmm. Which becomes an interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this could go writ large or even writ small, right? right. Um, like one could well imagine algorithmically one being an expert at, I, I, I don't know, uh, a, a particular neighborhood in the Bronx and forever reading about and being served that type of information on this neighborhood in the Bronx, right. such that expertise is at mm -hmm. a very, very high level. Mm -hmm. But again, it still doesn't address the economic reality of the Chilean situation, right? right. Nor will it ever, right. Right? right? Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, I, I think on, on, you know, on its merits, we, we can all agree it sounds bad, but in a strange way, it's technologically enabled human, right? right. One never knows everything about everything, right. Right? right? Or even a superficial level about everything. Well, One is always specialized right. somehow. Well, right? if anything, yeah. that, that's a yeah. benefit of the sure. society. Because yeah. if you had today yeah. to think about where yeah. your meals were coming from, sure. how to dispose of your waste, how to whatever, pursue all the things you needed just mm -hmm. to live, mm -hmm. you would probably be very self-sufficient and think, mm how do I acquire food, blah, blah, all those basic right. things. But you would never have the time or the mental energy to then dedicate your life towards one specific thing, mm. right? If you had to think, okay, how can I uh, create the perfect whiskey? Mm. You know, It would probably be very low on your list if you had to think about how do I feed myself? How do I sure, feed my sure, family? How do I sure, build a shelter? Sure. All these different things. So the, beautif the, the beauty of a, a government and yeah. an organization is that we all come together and say, okay, we're going to, someone yeah. is going to figure out for the benefit of themselves yeah. and for the benefit of the consumer, yeah. I'm going to produce bread. Sure. I'm going to make the best fucking bread in mm -hmm. a little town, yeah. wherever the fuck I am. Right. Okay. And someone else is going to say, oh shit, bread's taken. Yeah. I'm going to figure out how to make burgers and yeah. blah, 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 blah. Until you get to a point where you can sit down at a restaurant and say, I'll have a burger or I'll have uh, uh, a fish or whatever yeah. it is. And it comes delivered on a plate sure. from a venue. Right. That aggregates the work of very specialized sure. people. And the people eating those burgers yeah. are also specialized. Sure. Because they work in audio technicians or they develop TVs or mm -hmm. they write music for the opera or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And it'll in in this weird way it's like this um dismemberment of people into yeah. their own specialized fields sure. where they can push things forward. Mm -hmm. Because and if you go back to times before this, there's never a moment where you mm -hmm. can think about um just one thing specifically because sure. you could starve and die right if you couldn't feed yourself 
No, un- understood. And I, I like the, the feeding yourself possibility. I want to go back and still go back to what you said earlier about the, the human information carrying capacity of, uh, it, well, the human brain, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, effectively, of when we think about the idea of bubbles, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. How much could I force feed into your head in terms of some of the just in time learning that we talked about? Right. In terms of so let's imagine, right, an evenly um, geographically distributed um, local newspaper. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be a set of six thousand, eight thousand, twelve thousand, twenty one thousand. Right. Okay. How much could be force fed into you? Right. Mm -hmm. And how much could you actualize that into your existence? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Or would the limitation be right, the function by which this knowledge somehow exists at a non-connective neural level, right, mm-hmm. but that non-connectivity is simply that, right? Mm-hmm. So you got all the local news of, um, um, you, you know, throwing a country out there, Uganda, right, in your head, right? Mm-hmm. But by virtue of the fact that you haven't in any way, shape, or form interacted and or reflected upon anything touching upon the Ugandan experience, right, uh, uh, culturally, politically, economically, um, entrepreneurially, mm-hmm. within your day, right, mm-hmm. it just exists in your mind, but it's non-integrated, right? right? right. And, and and that 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 becomes kind of an interesting idea. Can one can one have within its head, right? Mm-hmm. Um, information and i mean information in the particulars not in the like platonic like a priori sense right Right, right. that is simply non-integrated into one experience right Right. it just kind of exists there right Right. and and i think at some point some psychologists would say well yeah that happens all the time but i'm talking about a specific upload function of data right well Um, yeah you know i I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second, and then let's jump into the question. Assuming you Mm upload that information Mm -hmm. today, all right, Mm -hmm. you've got that information. Mm -hmm. But if you've got the technology to to do that, you probably have the technology to also use the present state of your brain to then, uh, from a simulation standpoint, uh, understand that and kind of digest it, right? So A forced digestion. Not not a forced digestion, but a digestion. But, but what, in a what more does that efficient mean? time period. But what does digestion mean okay, so other than reflection? You receive a piece of yeah, information. Sure. You mull it over. Yeah. You compare it to reflection. your reality. You reflection. Reflect. Yeah, you yeah. reflect. You reflect it to, to, to yeah. everything you've known before. What does before. forced reflection mean like? Like a hyperactivized I'm, I'm not dream saying, state? No, 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 I, no, no, I'm just I, trying to figure it out. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that. I'm saying instead of you sitting there mm-hmm. having to sit with a cigar and a drink yeah. looking yeah. at the Atlantic Ocean yeah. and pondering what the information you developed was. Sure, sure. Maybe that process is automated okay. where the second you receive the information, there's a way to process that more quickly Yeah. so you can embody it into your the way you think. Mm. Oh, right? okay. No, that, that'd be ideal. It, that'd it'd be, be ideal. interesting. Yeah. It'd be ideal. Um, we, we, which yeah. is what we do already, right? Sure. We receive information. We sure. take it in. We sit down, we reflect it, how it responds to our life. But Does let, it make sense or not? let me play devil's advocate okay. um, and um, what what is one country or geopolitical reality that you would consider far afield from your personal experience, reading or otherwise, right? Mm. Like just as far as just yeah. general life? Sure, yeah. <clears throat> I, I mean... Well, it's not even a life commentary. It's just yeah. the fact that, um, and maybe you don't even need to answer. Yeah. So let's say you have country X or country Y, right? right? Okay. And let's say that um, you're uploaded in, in information to your head about that country, right. right? But because for all intents and purposes, there really been no prior touch points mm-hmm. with, within the, the, the kind of the neural strata that is you, right, right. on that right. country. Right. A lot of that information, I, I would still believe to kind of exist in more of an orphan state. Right. Mm-hmm. Because even the process of reflection requires some sort of beginning moment. Right. right? right. And if you don't have any frame of even a beginning. Right. right. Be- because right. there there quite literally has been no beginning. 
right, right? right. within your head right? right so you had this local news in your head right, right? okay right. Right. but um you, you know and not not to you know not to cast dispersions but there are what 193 countries in the world right mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. it's even a country you weren't even aware of that exists Right. right. So you have that local news of said country in your head. Right. right? right. But but there has been no beginning. Right. Yeah. So the force reflection process, mm -hmm. as you describe, right, yeah. Yeah. is very kind of hard to imagine yeah. how that could right. unfold, because it's almost like orphaned information in your own head. It's there, yeah. but it's non reconciled. Right. right. Um, well, well what, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, no, I think that's super interesting, yeah. but it's like the process of sure. receiving information. Sure. There's a few stages to that. There's receiving it, there's mm -hmm, an mm -hmm. initial reaction, mm -hmm. then there's, because let's say you're in a situation sure. where you're asked to respond to it sure. or absorb it. Absorb it. But how, how would you, but, but let me ask that question. How would you be asked to respond to it? Because it becomes kind of interesting. Like I, I, I can think about a situation in which when there's a known gradient, right mm -hmm. within your head and by known gradient there's a there there right and there's a lot of connectivity yeah. neurological literally neurologically connectivity yeah. right um you know experiences questions images right uh mm -hmm. you know all these sort of things right okay mm -hmm. but but when you have tr something that is truly for lack of a better word in your head but kind of alien in right. terms of the that that point of connectivity mm -hmm. right that is where the reflective process, I think, becomes quite hard. In, in the same but, way that I think, and to push it even further, yeah. I think it's actually a little bit hard to reflect upon the alien because the alien, by definition, yeah. right, um, w whether alien, I alien, whether it be an alien topic, whether it be, um, you, you know, what, what, what is a, a quote unquote alien in, in invasion or an alien knowledge set, alien by definition right. is something that is simply removed from your right. experience no, so no matter what. The, the same yeah. way that you, you're, you set settings yeah. on your yeah. phone yeah. or you set settings somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I and mean, it could be that you um, see so you recreate the bubble. Let's say you That's have, where you're going back to. Well, hold on. Yeah. Maybe you have a copy mm -hmm. of yourself. Sure. And you say, I don't know how I'm going to react to this information. Sure. For instance, if, someone, if you walk, I was walking down the street the other day. Sure. With my fiance. We're walking down with the dog, and this, this guy walks by, and yeah. he looks at me, and I look away because I don't need eye contact. Yeah. Right? And the, as he walks by, he farts. Okay. The guy, like, lets out, like, a steaming fart. Sounds silly, okay? Could in that in that moment, could you turn around and say, "Hey, fuck you, dude. Let's fight. Let's," or, or you could walk by and say, "That guy's a moron," and continue on, right? So, let's use that as a micro situation, mm. right? Where life exists, mm. you live within a framework, mm. okay? And some things are worth your time and are not worth your time, okay? And some things you will agree to and you won't agree to. Mm. For instance, if I was an MMA fighter and someone did that, I would maybe have a higher level of confidence that I could kick their ass, right? Or or show them some kind of justice. Mm. But mentally, does that make sense? Is it worth the trouble? Mm. It takes maybe a certain level of maturity. Is it worth the trouble to engage that person? Yeah. It's something like that. So I guess sure. what I'm saying is, let's, let's tie all this back in. Mm. Okay. If... An instance occurs. How much importance of it does it happen to you? You sit in a cafe. You are a biolog biologist, okay? And you hear that across the globe, okay, one company mm -hmm. goes out of business because one person was sick and had cancer and died. Does that matter to you as much in your life as if you were a person sitting next to that person who heard that news? Yeah. That was the relative of the person who died. So what the question becomes, what is the relative uh, relative importance of those scenarios? Yeah. And the only way to gauge those things are to maybe look through basic parameters. I hate to say it, but basic parameters of level of importance of significance. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if somebody sure. creates a suicide attack yeah. in the middle of New York City, mm. it will get a different reaction from people in New York than it will if a suicide attack happens in Afghanistan. And the same people swapped, right? So mm. 
those different types yeah, of people react no, to. Yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing. I, but I, I would say it's dispre- uh, d- depressing to think about. It, it, right? it's, it, but because, it's because it's relative. How, but, much things can, how many things can you think about? Yeah. How many things can you encompass? And bring well, I, I, I think we're we, on, on that point. I, I think we're seeing the the same thing in terms of relationship, relational knowledge mm-hmm. to the human experience, right. and how much can the the human mind uh, truly absorb and and think about in literal relationship uh, when we think about the neurological structure, meaning knowledge to the structure, right? right? But we also think about um, on uh, the the human quotient, right? Mm. The the structure of perceived societal cultural impulses right. back to the the individual, right. Right? right? Which in each case is not infinite, right? Mm. And again, is strengthened or uh, distrengthened according to uh, a particularly known gradients, right? Mm. That is the experience of the individual, right, which again maps to the experience of the neural structure and vice versa, right? right? right. And these become self-reinforcing experiences, right? right. My, my neurons are gonna dictate my actions, my actions are further gonna reinforce right. uh, my neurons, right? And um, pessimistic as that sounds, that in a nutshell is humanity writ large, right? right. And um, in, in the ability to escape that technologically or otherwise, mm-hmm. right, ends up uh, being uh, one of the, the challenges, again, I would argue, not just of our time, but of any time, right? Because I don't think that, um, I, I don't think our interconnective moment, right, mm-hmm. on a neurological level, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. is truly that dissimilar right, than earlier moments, Mm -hmm. right? Meaning that, right, if one were to look at the algorithmic uh, brain, right, Mm -hmm. produced from a news aggregator like a Google News or Feedly Mm -hmm. or et cetera, Mm -hmm. right, Mm -hmm. would it look so dissimilar, right, from a 16th or a 14th or a 9th century brain, right, Mm -hmm. in which said neurological structures are developing their own trees, Mm -hmm. their own familiar relationships, Mm -hmm. those own relationships that are disfamiliar, right? Right. And um, and, and, and quite frankly, I I, I think we fool ourselves in in thinking that the human experience is uh, meaning that while, and, and this goes back to how much information the human mind can truly hold, right? Mm-hmm. While, yes, we can talk about that we age live in an age of information abundance, right? right? right, right. I, I, I think we would be surprised, right, what um, fourth century London right. truly provided right. in terms of information flows, right? right. Um, not, 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 not so much in terms of their globalness or what we would talk about libraries of different um, congresses, et cetera, right? Right, right? But there was a lot of information to be had, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and how that, that would map out at a comparative neurology, right? Mm-hmm. I would be willing to bet would ironically look similar, right. not dissimilar, right? Um, and, um, and, and maybe that's my plucky argument for I, the past, right, because right, right. I, I think one of the things that we, we often disappreciate, right, right, is the reality in which the, the past is past mm-hmm. and it's no longer able to speak on its own behalf, right? right? right. But, but I think the past had its own complexities that, mm-hmm. quite frankly, were were as is complex and right. as is real. And if there was a neurological crosscut of their, their gray matter would reveal their themselves to be comparatively as such, right? right. right. It's our present reality, right. uh, i.e. Right. without the smartphone. Right. right, So I throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, I, no, no, I think that's, I think those are important things to point out, which is, and you could probably pull mm-hmm. it even further. You mm-hmm. could probably say for 100,000 years, there mm-hmm. hasn't been much difference between uh, humans now and humans now, 
or yeah. then or now, right? Mm-hmm. So what's what's the difference, right? Yeah. I, I think the difference is the the stuff we inherit. Yeah. Right. I mean, we come into this room, we speak into a microphone. Sure. We may or may not understand how it works. Sure. That is set up within a building on the 18th floor. Sure. That was built with technology. Sure. To allow that building. Sure. Um, that we inherited. All this information becomes inherited to mm-hmm, us, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe we take it for granted because we walk around New York City and you see buildings that are built to that dimension, right? Um, but I, I, I think the the interesting thing about today versus then mm-hmm. is that if you have an idea, right? Like if if the main goal of society is to push it as far as possible, mm-hmm. you want to allow every person who has a potential idea, every stab at the idea, mm-hmm. to have a chance actually allow it to manifest Mm -hmm. and the issue is you might have a um like let's think about for instance the most intelligent people of our our time or whatever it might be yeah how many steve jobs are alive today but are stuck in some bullshit job sure because their parents told them this is how you got to do it you got to pay the bills or they made a bad mistake when they're younger and well and they've got a mind of a genius but they sit there every day yeah do something that they don't want to do but they've got that creative yeah. muse that lives and flows between yeah. their blood that sure. they can never access because of their ecosystem, right? Sure. So I think if if you were that person, sure. I think the appropriate action would be, sure. how do I as quickly as possible remove the limitations from my life, which is having a job, having yeah. to go to work, having to spend my time for other people. Sure. And instead, using that time for myself to, to prove my hypotheses right yeah. or wrong, so that you could advance in your life, right? So yeah. you, you've you've you probably have people, yeah, men, women, whatever it is, whatever race, whatever, that are more intelligent than people that they they work mm-hmm. for or whatever. But you have the social constrictions, yeah. You have the way that they were raised or whatever it is that tells them you're not worth it. You're not being yeah. pushed on. Like, what would happen in a society if you? If you could inject into them in one second and make everyone as confident uh, in their ideas and beliefs as possible, what kind of society would you see? I mean, it, it would probably be absolute chaos for the beginning. Sure. In the beginning, but it might be that you, you know, maybe you can't have a society where everybody's confident or everybody is rich or everybody is. Poor. Well, it goes back it, to your earlier example where the equilibrium around Elon Musk, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It, it would actually be a, a little bit of a bizarre society. Right. I, I would argue the equilibrium would probably be non-sustainable. Right. 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 Um, you, you know, the whole society can't be an Elon and a Jobs and maybe a Bezos and right. et cetera. It's got a scale. Uh, uh, well, and, um, yeah, yeah. By the way, I wanted to take a moment and apologize for um, suggesting Hugo Chavez was from Colombia. Uh, I, I feel really bad on that, right? So it was Venezuela, and of course, and Concord flew to Caracas. I'll probably <laughs> apologize again. But, uh, um, yeah. It's all good. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, sure. I mean, yeah, it's super interesting. I mean, yeah. like, this isn't about, this podcast has never been about yeah. right or wrong. It's sure. about letting it flow. And yeah. I think. Yeah, but letting flow is important, but it's yeah. also important to properly recognize exactly. national yeah. leaders to their, their, their proper Definitely. jurisdictions. And I right. apologize for right. that. Yeah. Definitely. So, Definitely. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here. yeah. Thanks. Rolling. Yeah. All right, guys. Back again. I, and uh, um, still drinking uh, Buffalo Trace. And <laughs> thank you for joining us on the, the Pilot of Pilots podcast if somebody yeah. knows them sure they want to sponsor us yeah. it sounds great i mean it's a it's a it great sounds whiskey. excellent cheers uh cheers yeah cheers. We're, we're enjoying it quite a bit yeah so. uh, absolutely absolutely um uh, by the way i never thought i'd be the guy who would step away to use mm-hmm. the restroom three hours i mean i've flown to china and not used it but anyways uh quite all right uh, anyways uh where do we want to jump back in well, well i guess what is well the, what i I, I think we can uh I, I mean, a, a number of topics, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, one of the topics that always interests me and I, I, I think about is, I think we were talking about neurologically earlier and mm-hmm. the ability of the brain to retain information mm-hmm. is the the idea of the past, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And e- even as I said, I don't want to get too cultural about it. I, I, I think 
more often than not, there's an inability for the past to speak upon itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, for obvious reasons, because right. they're not present, right? right? But, but I think the reflection upon that inability, mm -hmm. right, it is important and significant, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that um, if, um, you, you know, I, I, I think there's, there, there's a lot of information structures that um, we, we, we just kind of cast away more generally as mm -hmm. having no value, mm -hmm. right? But we, we don't really sit back and look in terms of uh, where, and, and where I say sit back, I, I simply mean uh, the, the, the knowledge graph, the knowledge tree, where one is situated on. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, when you talked about before, you talked about this idea of humility, right? Mm -hmm. I want to zoom out even further because remember on this tree, right? Mm -hmm. We have our own humility, um, meaning as you talked about the origination of the spread podcast, i.e. a progeny, right? Mm -hmm. Remember your very grandchildren have what maybe I'm going to guess seven or eight AI tutors, mm -hmm. right? And you're talking about your memory and the creation of an avatar, right? right? right, right. And I, I, I think there's always that zooming out and mm -hmm. that's the, the thinking forward and thinking backward mm -hmm. and why that's so rea important, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think we miss that sometimes in, in our discussions, mm -hmm. uh, per particularly, particularly in our present age, so so for example, the Middle Ages, they were um, wedded to this idea of the Wheel of Fortune, right? Mm -hmm. Which we think about as being the game show, right? right? But it, it was a Middle Age concept, right? Okay, and they thought about reality in much of these terms, right? right. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're going down, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you're at the bottom, and sometimes you're on a trajectory to be elevated again. Right. Mm -hmm. And in how quickly or how slowly that wheel turned, right, right, had a certain degree of randomness to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but there was actually a strange degree of comfort in their idea of the wheel. Right. Right. And in if you talked about the idea of the wheel today, again, outside of the game show. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I think there would be very little governance to take that idea seriously. Right. right? But to be a little iconoclastic about it, why not take it seriously, mm -hmm. right? B because when, when you think about the, the not, not so much just the randomness of life, but mm -hmm. the cyclicality of life right. in the way it moves quicker, or faster, or quicker, or faster, right. you, you, you know, you're up, you're down, you're middle, mm -hmm. you're, you're, at, you're, you're going back up. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of knowledge to be had in, in thinking about this framework of just thinking about a reality, right? right? right. That we kind of discard as being, you, you know, that's what they thought about back then, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and that to me is a sad, right? Because it's an interesting thought um, framework, mm -hmm. right? Not that, I, I'm not saying you need to surrender your life to it, but it's a right. framework that deserves attention. Right. right. Yeah. Well, the, the, this idea of like the wheel of fortune, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, at least initially, it was like there's a positive and a mm -hmm. negative, and there's an exchange mm -hmm. between the positive and negative. And I think that that idea has been alive in ma many cultures, right? It's the yin and yang. It's, yeah. it's the chaos and the order. Mm. And if, if you were to structure your life in a way where you said it's not all good and it's not all bad, mm. and I'm going to find myself somewhere along the spectrum at any time mm -hmm. and then i will build resiliency yeah so that when it's bad i understand that it can be better mm -hmm. and when it's better i can understand it's going to be bad mm -hmm. you i think you'll find yourself in a happier position sure sure and if you're only sure if the wheel were to sure. stop metaphorically spinning yeah. and all of a sudden it would tip and is that truly the 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 psychological condition of our modern society well, i would yeah. argue no mm -hmm. right meaning that right I think there are those in the, the middle age period believing in this wheel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That are far better psychologically right. equipped mm -hmm. for the ups and downs of life, mm -hmm. uh, economic, 
personally or otherwise, yeah. right, than we are today, mm-hmm. right? Be, be, because we're focused on the the forever, um, you, you know, the, the stock market is going to rise in price right. or right. it's going to pull back. Then right. you buy in right. and then it goes back up, right. it, et cetera, et cetera, right? right. Yeah. But we don't really like, I, I, I think a wheel society, a wheel approach, at least psychologically, right? This COVID moment, like many plague moments within the wheeled framework, right? right, right. Would have been quickly understood, very right. quickly, mm-hmm. right? Almost to the point where it, it would ironically be non disruptive right. right. to a cycle of self, right. literally a circle right. of self, right? Well, right? I mean, um, yeah. well, let's think about it today, right? Sure. If we were to think about um, what is represented mostly yeah. in media that you digest, right? Mm-hmm. You don't see, there, 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 there are no TV shows today mm-hmm. about how to get out of bankruptcy mm-hmm. and how to deal with things like that. You might find it on YouTube or, or read books about it, like how to get out of negative situations. But typically, I mean, if you, if you go into social media, you see people essentially at the highlight of their life. Sure. You never see the behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Right? Someone could be sitting on a boat and be a million dollars in debt. Are they really happy? It, it doesn't matter to the viewer because they'll never know. Yeah. Right? They'll only understand what's visually represented. Sure. Okay. And I mean, you know, if you, if you, if you, th- you think about, let's say in a more simple time, mm-hmm. right? let's say before social media, right? And you were to see someone on one side of the wheel, mm-hmm. and the wheel quickly turn, mm-hmm. right? Let's say for instance, you were poor. And, sure. Um, you know, you, you were not of means, you were not able to live a sustainable life. Right. But every Saturday or every Sunday after church, you would buy a lottery ticket. Mm-hmm. And then one day you you won more money than you could ever imagine. Sure. And your wheel instantly turned. Yeah. I mean, that is not sustainable, mm-hmm. right? Because you only know one side of that but, wheel. But it, it, if I could offer um, within that psychology, instantly mm-hmm. turning and the non-sustainability of such was mm-hmm. understood exactly the way you described. Right. No, that that was literally part mm. of the psychology, mm. right? Where if you had somebody at the bottom that went immediately to the top, right? Right. right. The skepticism was that um, this was not sustainable, right? right? right. And in, in the same way you describe winning right. the lottery, right. which, as we know by percentage, right? right. People right. that win the lottery w- within a certain time frame return to similar economic uh, means by which they first won the lottery. Right. It, it's they, b- because you don't change as individual, right? right? You had a moment of fortune, right? right? right. But that moment of fortune doesn't necessarily, it, it was a dislocation right. of your place on the wheel. It, right. it wasn't necessarily, a, and, and that dislocation wasn't a happy celebratory event, mm-hmm. right? Right, um, if you will. There, there was yeah. even a study that said mm-hmm. if you were to take, and I'm not sure how they conducted this, but sure. if you were to take all of the world's wealth, sure. distribute it evenly, yeah. in 10 years, everyone would return to their same socio. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe it, it could be. I, 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 I don't know, degree. but but, yeah. but but what does that highlight, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, let's say it's partially true. Sure. Okay. It at least highlights a portion that the knowledge that lives within you is yeah. important. Yeah. If you in, let's say you inherited money and you don't understand how to manage it, sure. you, you probably will, you might end up in a different place unless you have access to people, sure. whatever. But um, uh, you know, let, let's say you're starting from the same position and you had the knowledge. So what it always leads me to is the knowledge is the most important thing. Sure. If you start something and mm-hmm. you fail, yeah, you never you didn't fail unless you gave up. Sure. You learned something. Sure. Right? When you did something new. You saw what worked, what didn't work, whatever. It is. We might relook at this tape and say, "Oh my God, this is too embarrassing. I don't mm-hmm. want to post it or whatever mm-hmm. it is." Mm-hmm. And that might push us to then say, "Next time we do this, mm-hmm. we're going to rethink this aspect of whatever." Sure, it, sure. Sticking your leg out there is the most important thing you can do, and that's the only way you grow. Right. Right. So if you have a society that, sure, has been trained to stay on one side of the wheel, yeah, um, and then change happens, you get sure. chaos, right? Like. How many states in the U.S. decided chaos is not something we're used to, mm-hmm. even though they might live yeah. in a chaotic city, and say we're gonna 
go on the opposite side of the spectrum mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and completely close off to any type of harm, right? Sure. And in the same country, <clears throat> maybe not too many states away, you have states that will say, um, we're a free place, we're yeah. used to chaos, and we will sure. deal with chaos as it comes. Sure. It's a very inter- interesting philosophy. Sure. And you see it within one country, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think there's... Uh, sure. Yeah, there's... There, I think there's lessons to be learned. I think there's things that are right and there's things that are wrong. Sure. And it depends on each individual person. The key is learning it as much as you possibly can. Sure. So that you can make a decision that's best for you. Yeah. You know, it's like there's tons of information out there. The question is, how does it apply to you? Sure. Right? Um, oh, I, I, I like it. And um, in, in the thinking on that it is you say um, – when um, you, you know pushing yourself out there and experiencing something new, mm-hmm. um, I, I understand we're we're winding down, and right. I, I really want to thank um, you uh, both for for kind of pushing me out there in this frame <laughs> of of discourse, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Wi- wi- which to me um, is something that. Um, you know, I've gone back and forth on. I I, I think there is certainly value on it. All right, yeah. I I'm a person, uh, both a lover of podcasts and lover of our own friendship. Right, Absolutely. but um, it, it wouldn't have initially occurred to me to be here behind a microphone, yeah. but uh, but uh, but I want to say within the context of the pilot of pilot podcasts, <laughs> maybe this never sees the light of day. Um, I, I you, you know, this has been a really good time, yeah, and uh, quite formative and interesting. And um, and I also put on it, I look forward to see the tape and get my own conclusions, It'll be interesting. but uh, yeah, it, it will be, but um, no, I, I, I think, um, yeah, it's good stuff, good, it's good stuff. stuff, yeah, yeah, you know, I, yeah, um. First off, I want to say thank you for being yeah. here. This first time mm. only happens one time. Sure. You walk down the street any given sure. time in your life. And it was cross, 104 degrees out. And it, was it was like, it was, really <laughs> it was crazy. It was, but it was very yeah. hot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and any time, when you walk down the street, the people you walk by, they might feel like background noise. Mm-hmm. But every person has a story yeah. and sets a tone. Yeah. Let's use that as a metaphor. Today, the situation we're in, the mm-hmm. time that we live in, yeah. whether we talked a lot about post-COVID, you know, a couple of years ago, if we had the same podcast, it would be a different conversation yeah. today. All those things make this moment unique. Mm. And I guess what I'm saying is, I'm glad to have you here. I think this is fantastic. And whether this comes out or not, I mean, yeah, I think it'll be great. And regardless if it does or it doesn't, whatever you do in life, someone is always going to hate it. Someone is always going to love it. The question is, internally, do you believe that what you're doing is true? Because if if nobody loves it and nobody hates it, then it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if people if people hate it or whatever. It, 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 the question is whether it makes sense to you. And I don't. I think we kind of talked about this in the beginning. Yeah. There's uh, a timelessness to this. Yeah. Whereas, let's say everybody hates it or likes it or whatever yeah. it is, or maybe you hate it. Yeah, yeah. It might be of value to someone in the future who says, "My great great grandfather was Steven Sorensen." Yeah. And I want to know who the fuck he was. And he didn't. They looked through your post. They looked sure. through that. But they wanted to see what he said, sure. how he reacted, and like what his thought process was. Absolutely. And at a minimum, this is it. And I, I think that's uh, the, the gradient proof. You've Great. really, uh, you've really, uh, really, uh, honestly, uh, um, you brought me to a special place in in terms of of thinking and more generally, yeah. and uh, looking to the future. I, I hope exactly as described. Yeah. Um, <laughs> future grandchildren look back and <laughs> say this: uh, "What a crazy grandpa!" You <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> <He> was <laughs> drinking. <laughs> you were drinking buffalo traits of all things. <laughs> Uh, whatever they're tricky at that yeah. time, but yeah. Uh, yeah. but that's all. That's, cool. that's all good. Yeah, that's all good. I think, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, so, let's yeah. Say. yeah. All we can do. Time is going to move forward. 
Yeah. We don't know when we're out of here. Sure, so sure. Let's enjoy the fucking ride. Yeah. Oh, Cheers no, to I, that. I like it. I, I like it. Cheers. 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 Thanks for watching. More episodes are available here on this platform and other main platforms where podcasts are heard. Thanks for drinking with us. Stay hungry. Stay foolish.